In the last exercise, we went ahead and entered in a formula into these two cells, and we calculated, or actually had Excel calculate for us, a value based on the value of the cells over here. What I want to do is show you a really quick and easy way to redo that kind of work without actually having to type it yourself. You'll remember that when we entered these two numbers over here, I showed you how you can click and drag and fill down and have Excel incrementally enter those values for you. Well, you can do the same thing with a formula, but here's how it works. Whenever we use a cell reference like this, J6, inside of a formula, if we do it just like you see here, this is called a relative reference. That means that it's relative to the cell that I'm currently in. And let me go ahead and explain that. Right now, I am in L6. So if I reference J6, that is basically like me saying, go two cells to the left because that's where J is, okay, and stay on my same row because I'm on row 6 and I've referenced row 6, which is J6. So that's a relative reference. If I took that formula and I copied it somewhere else, then the same principle would apply. So let me show you how this works. With one cell selected, with just that formula, I'm now going to click and drag that same little handle downward all the way to this point and release. Now look what happens. All of those values get updated, but they don't contain the information for J6 and K6. They've got new information. How is that? That's because each one of the cells has that relative reference formula. Since I'm dealing with L7 right now, it's doing the same thing. It's going two columns over and on the same row. So it's picking up J7. Then it also goes one column over on the same row and picks up K7. And it multiplies those two values. So I have copied essentially the pattern or the template of that formula and I have filled these cells with that same value. And don't worry, there will be more on that later. I know it's kind of a tricky subject, but we'll go ahead and deal with that a little bit more later. Right now we've got another problem because I want to have my total sales calculated in this column, but there's stuff there already. So how do we deal with this? Well, what I would recommend is selecting and highlighting the cells that you want to move, and then you can right click and go to cut, and they'll stay there right now, okay? But they're not gonna stay there forever. This is just a temporary thing. This is just to let you know, have a reference to what you're cutting. And then if we select the place where we want to move them to, we just need to click the first cell and right click and go to paste. Okay, moves them right over for us and they're no longer there. Now, at this point, we want to use another formula and have some things calculated for us. But in fact, all this information needs to be very dynamic. So the first one is total sales. As you might have guessed, we want all of this information added up and we want it right here. Now I could go in and do it the same way by hitting the equal sign and clicking on this cell and then put a plus sign and click on this cell. But that would get pretty monotonous to do that for every single one and what if I had a list that had like a thousand items that would be kind of you know that'd be kind of counterproductive so let me show you something else this is called a range reference and that's where we refer to a range of cells we're gonna use this range reference inside of a function and a function is a pre-configured template of instructions it's like somebody programmed Excel to do something and then you can just call that function and say, hey, do this or hey, do that. The way I like to talk about it is uh, like if you were the author of a book, let's say that you wanted to get something published, you would write your book and then to get it where people could sell it uh, or to get it out in a store, you would not be the one that prints the book. You would not be the one that puts the binding together. You wouldn't put the cover on. You probably wouldn't even do your own marketing. You would have somebody else do that. So what you would do is you write your book 
and then you would send it to maybe a printer, you'd send it to a publisher, and they would send you back a finished book. And then you could take that book if you wanted to and sell it. That's what a function does. You send some specific information to the function. It does all the work for you and just sends back the result. And the function that we're going to use is called the sum function. And there are tons of functions inside of Excel. You're going to find like probably a handful that you use every day and then another handful that you use every once in a while. Uh, you, you will never use all the functions that are in Excel. I guarantee it. But we still want to start our formula with an equal sign because that's how all formulas start. And the name of this function is sum, the way that you uh, refer to it. And actually, since we typed an equal sign and it knows that we're going to enter a formula here, look what pops up here in the name box of functions. Sum, because that's like the most popular uh, function. Okay, so that's what we want to use. We're going to go ahead and type the word sum. As you start typing text like this, Excel goes in there and kind of, this is a list of all the functions that start with S-U-M. Okay, so just the functions that start with S-U-M, tons of them. If I backspace and I just have the letter S there, check this out. This is all the functions that start just with the letter S. So tons of stuff, like I said, you'll never use at all, but uh, a lot of them are very, very handy. So we type sum, and then we're going to put a opening parenthesis. And let me explain a little bit the tool tip that you're seeing right here. Okay, because this will kind of help you with all the other functions that you're going to be using. Obviously, I can't demonstrate thousands of functions to you. So I'm going to tell you how they work. With most functions, you're going to send a value to it, and then it's going to return a result. And the way that you send the value is you put it inside of parenthesis. And notice in the tooltip, we have the word sum, an opening parenthesis, and then number one, comma, and then number two in the square brackets, comma, the ellipsis, dot, 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 and a closing parenthesis. This is what's called a syntax. This lets you know the formatting or what that function is expecting you to send. And what they're trying to say here is send a number. So you're going to send one number, and then you're going to do a comma. And if you want to, that's what these square brackets are for. If you want to, you can send another number, comma, and you can keep going. That's what the ellipse is all about. So this is giving us a template or a syntax for this function. Now, like I said, I want to use a range reference. I want to reference several cells and send them all. The way that we do that is we type in the first cell reference and a colon and the last cell reference. That will include every cell in between. So if I was to do L5, okay, and then type a colon and then select L11. Notice it says L5 colon L11. Another way that I could do that is just by clicking and dragging and selecting all the cells. So I'll go ahead and put a closing parenthesis because I don't need to send any other numbers. And before I hit the enter key, let's just take a look again at what this specific formula does. We started it with an equal sign. We typed the word sum because that is a special function built into Excel. And a function is a set of instructions. It has this particular function is very simple. Here's what it does. You send it a bunch of numbers and it adds them all up. That's all that it does. Okay, so it's very simple. But we're sending it a range. That means from L5 all the way to L11, I want to send it all these numbers and then it's going to add them up for me and give me the result. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And there's our result. And don't worry if you're not getting this. This is tough stuff. You might have to see this a few times. Okay, but if you're following along with me, that's great. You're doing fantastic. Remember, what it's doing is we've got a formula. It starts with an equal sign. We're using a function, and functions will always be capitalized like this. And then inside those parentheses is the value that we're sending to the function. And what we will see in the cell is the result of that function. So the function gets those numbers. It gets that range reference, all these numbers right here. 
It adds them all up, and the total is sent back to us, and that's where we get this $36,285.25. I'm going to let you go ahead, catch up, get up to the point where we're at right now. Again, do it yourself. That's the way you're going to learn. And when you're ready in the next exercise, we'll go ahead and enter some other formulas here that are going to calculate some other things for us.